What is the beginning of wisdom? In the 1970s, Pink Floyd sang, we don't need no education. You know, several years later, some of us are wondering if education is really all it's cracked up to be. Today we have as our guest, Lee Brainerd. And Lee, you are a gifted individual because you have such an incredible amount of knowledge and wisdom, but you've gained much of it through self-education. Tell us a little bit about how you became an expert in ancient languages, including Greek and Hebrew and even others. Well, as a young believer, I was a, a babe in the Lord. I was in the army and I was reading a magazine article. I don't remember the magazine. And it mentioned a man named Christmas Evans, who was a one-eyed Baptist preacher from Anglesey, England. He taught himself Greek, Hebrew, and Latin. And I'm thinking to myself, why would anyone learn those languages? Well, I come to find out the New Testament was written in Greek. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew, except for chapters 2 to 7 in Daniel, which is in Aramaic. And then the earliest translations were Latin and Gothic and languages like this. So I decided I'm going to learn Greek. I went to a bookstore. I bought a Greek grammar. I bought a Thayer's lexicon and I bought a Greek New Testament. And I just started studying Greek and I, short, I added Hebrew shortly after and I never stopped. You taught yourself Greek and Hebrew. Nathan, what's wrong with us? That's what I want to know. <laughs> uh, well, I think a lot of people are cowed uh, when it comes to education, especially yes. when it comes to the Bible. And so they end up relegating what the Bible commands us to study and be good Bereans. And instead of studying for themselves, they trust some religious authority, yes. uh, a pastor or professor or something. So, well, they've done all the education, whatever they said goes. And it's interesting because it ends up creating these little camps where everybody lives in, well, I'm a follower of, and there was a Bible about, you know, I'm a follower of, of Paul and I'm a follower. Well, we have those today yes. without actually studying for ourselves. And I think you provide a great example uh, for us in that you didn't just say, okay, I'm just going to listen to David Reagan or I'm going to yep. listen to Tim LaHaye. You said, hey, wait a minute. What do they believe and why do they believe? And you studied it for yourself and you actually even went beyond beyond and yeah. learned the languages. And why do you think that's so important? Well, our primary obligation before the living God is to learn his mind. Mm. I mean, we, we say, well, we need to glorify God. That's our human responsibility. Well, yes, but you can't glorify God if you don't know the way he wants to be glorified. Um, we're supposed to worship God. Well, what way does he want to be worshiped? The fact is the core of worship is emulation. Our outer forms of singing the right kind of songs with the right kind of words um, and even giving really nice devotional thoughts. If our heart isn't conforming to the, to the image of Jesus Christ, that worship is empty. Well, the only way we can conform to the image of Christ is to have our God-given reason applied to the God-given revelation and say, Lord, what am I supposed to think? How am I supposed to walk? How am I supposed to live in this ungodly world? You know, Isaiah uh, <laughs> cites God's call to him. Yep. And he said, come now and let us reason, reason together. Boy, I better have a very elevated sense of reason yep. to be able to, uh, to even engage in communication with the living God. And yet he's chosen to Amen. communicate with us. You know, right now in our world, education is touted as the solution to every problem. And yet many of these so-called experts are driving our, our system, even our society, in a way that goes distant from yep. the Word of God and even the living God. Just in recent days, the National Education Association has declared their support for phrases like birthing parent instead of mother. Uh, some of the, the phraseology that even many of our political leaders in Washington want to embrace. And, and this is crazy, and yet that's where the experts are driving our educational system? Yep. Well, the whole education system, at essence, if you understand the mystery of iniquity that's working in the world, education is like a frog in a pot that's slowly being boiled to death because we're taking America and slowly upping the temperature of apostasy until every individual revelation of God in his institutions, his ways, his heart, his mind, his word is polluted, defiled, misrepresented step by step by step by step. Mm -hmm. and, and you can go back to the 60s when they pulled the Bible out That's of right. schools and look at the test scores and all, and everything started to go down after that because the beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Lord, right? Amen. So Absolutely. We took that That's exactly out. where I was going. But you know, it seems like now we're at the point where in this fall, Oregon, 
school systems is going to yeah. put tampons in the boys' locker rooms. Yep. You've got guys like Bill Nye, the science guy, teaching that there's many, many genders, and the kids are being indoctrinated into chaos. So do you think Satan's infiltration of the school system is for the purpose of creating chaos? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And his involvement in every institution in the world is designed to bring chaos because once you've bring in Babylonian chaos to the entire world of a thousand flavors and it's all they have in common is their opposition to the revelation in the word of God. Once you bring that chaos, now you can bring unity out of that chaos and boil all this Babylonianism down to one Babylonian religion, one Babylonian economic system, one Babylonian political mm -hmm. system. But you can't do that as long as people are clinging to objective revelation. You can't do it as long as Christians are being truth and salt and light Absolutely. in this world. And so it is imperative that all of us who have put our faith in Jesus Christ exert uh, not just our opinion, but in, exert the truth as revealed in Scripture yes. in whatever sphere we have influence in, whether it is the educational sphere, uh, our workplaces, our families. You know, common sense is not very common anymore, Lee. And That's so again, right. I am, I'm grateful for the gift God has given you for bringing great insight to, to languages, to passages of Scripture, but really he's given all of us a gift, Absolutely. which is the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. And so whether we have a credentialed education or whether we have just a heart's desire to know the Lord better, Amen. we should all be studying his word and not going after the education that takes us away from the Lord God. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, we all have the same educational objective and the same educational platform if, if we do things the Lord's way. Um, and that platform is we all need to be in Christ's school of the Bible. Some people call that the backside of the desert. I like to call it a Dullam Bible Institute, but it doesn't matter what we call it we need to be educated by the Lord in his Berean method. You know, Amen. a lot of parents, and I will dare say even grandparents, want their children and grandchildren to succeed. So they'll send them to a university, a college, someplace where they can get a good start in life. But Jesus Christ said, what does it gain you if you gain the whole world? That's right. But lose your soul. And sometimes I fear that we are giving our children or grandchildren over to a system that is indoctrinating them and poisoning their minds to move away from the Lord and, and we're losing their souls That's if we're right. not careful. When we homeschooled our kids and when we did, uh, I had an educational philosophy that my two main goals with my kids were to teach them to read and to teach them to think. If I could teach them to read the Bible in good books and teach them how to think, they could face anything in the world and they could learn any subject. And a lot of people thought that my I didn't have a, a big enough emphasis on science and big enough emphasis on math and, and the different subjects that if you're trying to emulate the school systems in your homeschooling. Um, but my, as far as I'm concerned, my method succeeded with my kids. My kids know how to read and they know how to think and it's paid off. Mm. One of the greatest things my son, oldest son ever told me was, Dad, my faith isn't your faith, it's my own. Amen. Because we taught him to think. So even though he went through Christian school in high school, he still went through secular school and secular college. Yep. Mm -hmm. Had two others go through secular schools. And of course, there's the fear that they would succumb to a worldly system. But I graded him in the Bible. We went through apologetics, like at dinner time. Amen. And I taught him to think. And they'd always come home and say, you know what they taught us? Man, that's crazy because of da, 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 da. Yes. And I think that's the best way we can equip our children. Amen. Well, Nathan already said it, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, but as Lee would probably tell us, that word fear could also be just translated as respect. When we revere and respect Amen. the living God, that is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. Godspeed.